Good morning, this is Kim Hammer, pastor of Selene Baptist Church in the community of Tall Outside Benton with your morning devotion taken from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. We're a little bit out of sequence, but this is an important date and this is an important devotion that I'm giving you from the Word of God because it deals with the responsibility for us to get out and to vote. God wants us to participate in the process of determining who it is that is going to govern over the affairs of our nation at every level, whether it be local, state, or at the national level. God actually gives us some specific instructions that we looked at yesterday with regards to the quality of the candidates that he wants us to place in office that are going to govern over us because those qualities will help align with who he is as God, but what he expects of man who has been given authority to govern over his people. In Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, it stresses the importance of why we should get out and vote. Many races have been won or have been lost by one vote. All you have to do is Google races won or lost by one vote, and you'll be surprised about the number of races over the years that have been determined by just that one vote. I know many people feel that their vote does not count, that when there are millions of votes being cast, they say, well, what difference is my vote going to matter? It matters a lot, not only in the total number of votes that have been cast, but to you as a person that you have fulfilled your obligation and you have been responsive to biblical command to get out and to participate in the process. If you don't go out and vote, you are being disobedient to what the Word of God says that we should participate in the process of deciding who's going to have the responsibility to govern over us to make sure that we can, as the Word says, live in a peaceful environment. So for you not to get out and vote is a direct violation of being disobedient to the Word of God when God has said, get out and participate, and as you do, here's the standards I want you to look for and the candidates that I want you to place in responsibility over you. So not to vote, you might even say, is a sin. When you take a look at Romans chapter 13, 1 through 7, it gives us the answer to the question why it's important for us to participate in choosing who will govern over us as a nation. The first thing is in verse 1 that tells us that we are going to submit to whoever it is that we give the authority to govern over us. Everyone must submit himself to governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which is established by God. Two points taken from this as to why we should get out and vote. Number one, those that are elected are gonna govern over us. And if we as God's people want to make sure that there's an environment maintained to where we can worship freely and openly without fear of persecution as it exists in other nations, and I'm afraid even as it exists within pockets within our nation, then we need to do our part to make sure that there are those individuals that are elected that afford the right to all citizens to be able to worship openly without fear of persecution. And if you don't do your part by getting out and voting, especially for a candidate who's gonna secure that freedom for us, then you should get ready to submit to that authority, which is not gonna be the authority I think you want to have to place yourself under the authority of because they're not gonna let you worship openly and freely. Secondly, we want to align with who God has put in place. Now we know in another passage of scripture, it says God appoints people to their positions and he removes them. He establishes kingdoms and he demolishes kingdoms. Everything is in the power of God's hand. But the one thing I wanna do as a child of God and as a citizen of this nation is to know that while I just have one vote, my one vote matters in the eyes of God. We worry about our vote mattering in the eyes of the millions who are gonna cast votes today or whether our vote is gonna be the one that will push somebody into victory or push somebody into defeat. Really what matters is that we should decide that our one vote counts in the eyes of God because God is going to establish those in authority that he chooses to put there. And we get to participate in that process working with God by casting our vote for the ultimate decision that he makes. Now, what that also tells me is that sometimes I might vote for a person that I don't think needs to be in office, or I might vote for a person who gets in office. Ultimately, God has the final choice and the final say, but what I've done is what I've been commanded by God to do, and I can be at peace that no matter who gets put in office, God has a reason for them to be there. Whether I voted for them or I didn't, the fact of the matter is God's made the final decision. The third thing is this. There's a question in verses two through three. It says, do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Well, naturally, none of us want to be in a position where we fear those that are in authority over us, whether it's the political leaders, whether it's the law enforcement, whether it's the military, whether it's anybody that's in a position of authority over us. We don't want to have to function in a spirit or an atmosphere of fear. 
Do you want to be free from the fear of the one in authority? Then you need to participate in the process and vote for those that are not going to bring about an element of fear for you to be able to function as a citizen of this state or your community or this nation. Because those that are going to be placed in authority over us are going to have control over us when it comes to the policies that they make and the decisions that they make that may affect and intrude upon your freedoms. And we should not elect anyone, nor should we sit back and not participate in the process because it may bring about somebody who we fear has the authority over us. The fourth thing is this, to help determine what is right so that if it is wrong, it'll be in the hands of God. Last part of verse three says, for rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, do you want to be free from the fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and he will commend you. What is right? What is the right thing to do? Sometimes we wonder, are we voting for the right candidate? Are we voting for the wrong candidate? The right thing to do is to get out and vote and then let God take control of the situation, but you have participated in the process. So you can help determine what may be right or what may be wrong by you going out and help and voting. Verses four through five says, you will submit to whoever's chosen, but we can be driven out of a pure conscience that we have helped in the process. When you look at verse four and five, it says, for he is God's servant to do you good, but if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath to bring about punishment and wrongdoing. If God has to use us the authority to discipline us, we want to know that we have participated in the process, that if that be the case, then we can rest assured that we worked alongside with God to make sure that those people that are in authority are going to handle it in a right manner and not in a wrong manner. That way we don't have anything to fear because we know that if we do something wrong and punishment has to be exercised, then it will be done in a fair process and we won't have to fear anything. Then the last thing is this, when you look at verses six through seven, it deals with a subject matter that none of us like to talk about, but it's a reality of life in order for the government to function, and that is the matter of taxes. And so I use this to say this point with regard as to why it's so important for you to participate in choosing who is gonna govern over us as a nation. You wanna have some say so in the policies that are gonna be decided and your vote and who you cast your vote for and what their historical record is and what their promises are should have a direct impact on your decision because those that we place in authority over us are gonna make the policies that are gonna govern us. And if you don't wanna have any fear as far as who's gonna govern over us, then you need to go back to yesterday's devotion, look at the candidate that aligns with what God says a candidate should be in order to get God's blessing and get your vote from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17. And those are the people that we wanna place in office because then we'll have no reason to fear and we'll look back and know that we did our civic duty, but more importantly, we did what we were commanded to gut by God to do, and that is get out and vote. I would close by just saying this, there are men and women who have given their lives so that you can have the privilege to go out and vote. There are men and women who are securing our freedom today, both abroad and here at home, in order for us to have the privilege to get out and vote. There are people in other countries who wish that they could vote in the freedoms of which we have the opportunity to vote. And for you to not get out and vote, I will say this, it is a sin.